It's Thursday, March 17th, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Geek News Central is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Everybody got a great show lined up for you, and uh, lots to talk about, as usual. And uh, kind of a, I guess for a better word, a little stormy, windy evening here in Honolulu. But you know what comes next. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. We're go flight. Microphone. We're go flight. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go flight. Interflux totism suppressor. All right. I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Button, button, who's got the button? Four. There is no cause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central podcast, coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central studio overlooking Greater Oahu. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Todd Cochran, and I want to welcome you to the Geek News Central podcast. Make sure you get over to geeknewscentral.com. Check out all the great content. Check out our ar- archive podcast via the podcast link as well. And when you're over there, make sure you get signed up for the show so that you can, or actually signed up for the newsletter. The newsletter contains everything that I'm going to talk about during tonight's show, and you'll get it delivered directly to your inbox immediately following the uh, basically the publishing of the show. While you're at the website, make sure you also get uh, subscribed to the podcast. You'll find a link on the website that basically, you know, you just one-click subscribe for, for the majority of you and uh, just get you right in straight up, and you're able to subscribe. You see where you can get the audio, video, special media events, the morning tech show. We'll talk about that here in a second as well. But you find how to subscribe to the show on the uh, orange box on the uh, the website. Of course, you can just play the show right on the website as well. We want to welcome our listeners and viewers from 182 countries around the world. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, it's late here in Honolulu. I got off to just a little bit of a late start tonight. Uh, I was talking with my, actually consoling my wife. She was had watched some of the uh, NHK news coming out of Japan, and she'd been kind of staying away from it the last three or four days because it upset her so much. And we were talking about, uh, you know, the situation there. Her family's safe and everything, but it's still, when it happens uh, to your homeland, and, of course, her, her being originally from Okinawa, um, it, uh, it definitely uh, is an impact um, in a big way. But uh, we've been talking about what we're going to be doing, and I'm actually going to be talking here in a few minutes about what I'm going to be doing on Saturday night that I hope all of you will take uh, some time out of your schedule and join me um, during a one-hour. Basically, there's going to be a 24-hour podcast done by some folks that um, are over at the OnePiecePodcast.com, and they're going to have – it's just a bunch of anime podcasters, and they've asked me to come on and appear – for an hour at midnight Eastern, and you can go, go to helpjapan.onepiecepodcast.com, and it's a 24-hour podcasting drive to help earthquake victims in Japan, and uh, they're looking to raise, I think they're trying to raise around seven or $8,000, so we'll see what happens here. Oh, they've already raised over $5,000, which is great, and uh, so we'll see where they're able to end up in, uh, in donations. But I'll be appearing at midnight um, on the actual event uh, via Skype. I'll be calling in and uh, look forward to uh, participating with those folks. And I guess we're going to be talking about podcasting and everything else. So there's a schedule up as well. I have that link in the show notes for you to check out. But anyway, again, it's at uh, helpinjapan.onepiecepodcast.com. Got a little bit of uh, I got my side window open in the studio here, and um, every once in a while the wind blows a certain way, and you may hear a little, you know, in the background of the microphone because it's hit me right in the face where it normally kind of comes in straight, so it's whipping around a little bit. So I apologize if you hear that uh, that wind feedback. I normally try to close that window down when it happens, but uh, missed it tonight. Okay, let's talk just a little bit here. Um, if you're watching us on Justin.tv or on Ustream, we want to welcome you to the show. And, of course, if you're watching us post-show on the Roku or Boxy, 
We want to thank you uh, for uh, for tuning in and kicking back and, and watching the show. One thing I'm asking for is some uh, video feedback. I've been doing some experimentation a little bit with the video recently. What I have found is using sorts and squeeze and really uh, doing the M4V encode is the files are ending up a little bit bigger than I want them to be. So I have went back to an alternative method for uh, producing the M4V file. We're still using uh, that program for the WebM, but I just can't seem to get them to... Well, what happens when I use the sorts and squeeze? The files are a gig. And when I use the other method I use, they're about 640 megs, same resolution, and the video looks about the same, so I don't know what they're doing different that makes it... Uh, makes it worse but if you're watching on the roku or on the boxy uh, look over the last couple of episodes and let me know which one looks the best um, and that would give me some feedback and if you're having problems with the downloads with anything caching or anything like that it'd be, uh, it'd be greatly appreciated so again it's just for those that are watching on the roku or boxy or if you're watching online as well uh, let me know uh, how that uh, how it's been looking recently we are going to be doing a Saturday show, and uh, really, it's going to—I I don't uh, know how I'm going to handle the uh, little extra early wake-up call, because I'll have to get up here at uh, 5 a.m. Hawaiian Standard Time to be ready to go at 6 a.m. Hawaiian, which is 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific or 12 noon Eastern. But I will be doing a Saturday morning show this coming Saturday, so I look forward to having a couple of guests on. And uh, haven't uh, locked in those folks. We doing that tomorrow. So I'll be announcing uh, basically via Twitter or whatever that uh, who's going to be on Saturday morning. But should be a great hour, hour and a half of basically review of what's been going on in tech over the, uh, the, past, uh, the past week. One thing I do want to mention is that Sunday night I jump on an airplane and head out to uh, Silicon Valley. I'm going to be out in Silicon Valley uh, Monday through Thursday. So there will be a normal Monday show. I'll be doing it on the road. I do not fly out of uh, San Francisco coming back to Honolulu until 7 p.m. on uh, Thursday evening, which gets me back here pretty late. Gets me in about 11.30 uh, Hawaiian Standard Time. So there will be no Thursday evening show. So what I'll probably do is I'll do the show on Friday instead. So the show will be uh, one day late next week. But uh, great things are happening and uh, looking forward to uh, bouncing out to Silicon Valley and having meetings. If any of the Ohana are out there, like to uh, hook up, let me know, and I'll try to uh, schedule a day to do that. I'm staying downtown in, in San Jose, so uh, I'll be in the downtown area, and uh, hopefully if folks want to meet up, we can do that uh, right there uh, in the downtown area and catch a restaurant where I won't have to just go and drive too far after meeting. <coughs> so anyway, again, uh, Monday show in, uh, in San Jose. And then we'll have the Thursday show will probably slide to Friday just due to me getting back to Honolulu at near midnight. Uh, but uh, sp plan on spending most of the day Thursday in San Francisco. So I'm going to be up there doing some meetings in San Francisco as well. So if there's anybody actually in, uh, in San Francisco that works in downtown or something, you want to catch lunch. Uh, I think right now that looks like I'll have some open time right there on lunchtime. Uh, let me know, and we can meet up in San Francisco as well. Okay, um, let me look here at my list. So, again, uh, Saturday we'll have the Saturday morning tech show, and that will get kick off again, 9 p.m., 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, and then I'll be on at 12, well, really midnight Eastern, which is actually only 6 o'clock in the evening here in Honolulu for the benefit for Hello J Help Japan dot one podcast.com looks like they've raised a great amount of money already so congratulations to them and uh, look forward to seeing you at that event i'll be probably putting the live stream up at uh, geek news central hey one thing's for sure definitely check out godaddy.com longtime sponsor here of the show and really when you're looking to save money godaddy is the place to go especially when it comes to domain names dedicated servers virtual dedicated servers shared hosting accounts to get uh, one of their shared hosting accounts and host your website over there um, they, it's really, they've got some great plans. Their control uh, panel interface makes it really, really simple to uh, to make that happen. You do not have to be an expert. It really is, uh, they've got the menu system designed now so that it just kind of walks you through the process. 
and really maintaining and building a website at this point could not be easier. I think I, from the time I signed up for a shared hosting account to do some trials and putting a, a domain up there and actually having a WordPress blog installed, it was like 15 minutes or something. So uh, pretty easy peasy. The main thing is, is to remember you can get uh, a lot of great savings by going to geeknewscentral.com. You'll find in the second column of the website here a link that says GoDaddy promo codes. And when you get over there, you'll find Geek5 will save you 15% on orders $20 or more. Todd20 will save you 20% on a one-year shared hosting account. ComSale and ComSale2 will get you .com renewals and savings on new .coms. Of course, I think where Geek199 code is still working. So if you're a new customer, you can get .coms at $1.99. CES25 will get you 25% off for new customers only. That code is soon to die. So make sure you get out there and use that CES25 code and uh, pick up a, a that's a huge huge savings so all the codes of course can be found at geeknewcentral.com and thanks for good Eddie, for being a longtime sponsor here at the show um let me look at my rest of my stuff here we have i've heard a back from don don is our show host of our gadget show i have not going to announce what the name of the show is yet they were in recordings today they actually recorded the first episode so he's going to be bouncing that over to me, I hope, tomorrow. I hope I'm going to get that uh, tomorrow. He's, uh, boy, you guys are going to love what he has done for the first episode of this gadget show that's coming here to, to Geek New Central. Don's going to be a new, uh, new content uh, creator. He's going to be creating content on the website, providing a show once a week for us. And uh, it's going to be a really, really cool show. I'm, I'm serious. It's, uh, I'm really excited about it. And uh, he's, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited to see the first episode, and I know it's going to be from a production standpoint, it's going to be awesome. And uh, uh, just, I guess, how can I say it? He's got a 850 TriCaster as well. So, yeah. So he's, he's going to be doing some cool stuff. Well, anyway, long story short, we're looking forward to having Don on as part of the family here, and uh, we'll be talking more about the name of his show. Uh, here soon. I'm kind of keeping that under wraps at this point until uh, we announce it officially and put it up on the website. Hey, if you're looking uh, to help us out here, you guys know that when we went to CES in January, the folks at Luxor took care of us. They put us up in the hotel. We had nice rooms, access to facilities, food, you name it. And uh, they've got a great benefit package over there. If you're looking to get out, out to Las Vegas, you'll definitely want to go stay at the point. It's a great deal. Deals start at 40 bucks. You'll find a link on the website at geeknewcentral.com. So go out and stay at the new Luxor Las Vegas. I had a great time. The rooms were really nice. You know, that was the thing I was the most worried about, going to Vegas and staying in a new hotel. I didn't know, you know, really. I see, you see a picture on a website, and you think, okay, what's is that really the is that really what it is? And I've stayed in some hotels in Vegas where I walked in the room, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not staying here. I'm turning around and leaving because of cigarette smell and so forth. That was not the case at all in any way shape or form at uh, Luxor Las Vegas and uh, check it out the new Luxor Las Vegas again deal starting at 40 bucks link is up on the show notes you've got about uh, 13 more days to help us out there and we would appreciate it if you do and thanks for Luxor being a sponsor here at uh, at Geek New Central we also want to we've got a new insider tonight uh, we had a, another person sign up and become an insider we want to thank actually I have an email I'll, I'll bring up his name at the end of the show but if you want to become an insider and support the show, go to geeknewscentral.com forward slash insider. If you want to pick up uh, cool stuff to wear from the show, all you got to do is go to cafepress.com forward slash Ohana store. Longtime listener Sam from uh, Albuquerque runs that for us. So uh, definitely check out the Ohana store and pick up your Ohana wear. Okay, let me see here. Let me get into the regular content already. Um, we've got uh, a pile, a pile, a pile, a pile of stuff. And um, the first one is an interesting one. And what this is, well, let me go ahead and, and, and cut and paste this so you guys can actually see this. Uh, you know, I'm big into security um, here at the, uh, the home of the Geek and Central podcast. And uh, this kind of drew my attention tonight. This is called the uh, Burglar Blaster. It's a self-contained electronic pepper spray anti-burglary system. And what this does is it uses a passive infrared detection system 
And this blaster can control up to areas about 2,000 square feet. When triggered, the unit releases four ounces of irritating OC pepper spray. And uh, this is very cool. It is, I'm very excited about this particular unit. I can think of some uh, very interesting places to, uh, to put this. Now, there's a delay that can be set by the owner. And it comes with a high-pitched warning tone. And uh, this might be the perfect, uh, perfect item for a shed. Um, could be, uh, you know, a, uh, a side room, something to that effect. Um, if you've already got an alarm system, I don't know if you want to use this with it. I don't know if you want to use this inside your house because I can't imagine four ounces of pepper spray being blasted inside my house. But I could imagine that being in my shed or a couple of other places where I don't want people snooping around. <laughs> and uh, they're not going to hang. There's no way they're going to hang when this thing goes off. That's for sure. So uh, definitely, I have this linked up in the show notes. It's not cheap. It's uh, it's six hundred bucks, but um, boy, what a surprise! Four ounces of pepper spray, <laughs> and uh, again, it's got a, up to a forty second delay. And be woe to be the one to forget to have uh, um, to disarmed it, and you get blasted yourself. But anyway, link will be up in the show notes. You guys can uh, check it out. Hey, Robert Scoble linked me to a YouTube video that's, and this is, um, I'm not going to spoil it for you. It's, um, it's entitled Renegade, a Modern Palindrome. And I have it linked up in the show notes. This is very, when I, was, I really didn't pay attention to the title, but just stick through this, okay? It's 2 minutes and 16 seconds. The link will be in the show notes, of course. But stick through the entire thing. And, and don't stop to at the end. Just just let it roll for a few seconds, and you guys will be in for a nice surprise. So um, this is brilliant. It really is. And uh, I haven't seen anything quite like this written before. Link will be up in the show notes for you to check out, okay? So you're going to have to come over to the website or be on the newsletter to get this because this, I'm not going to give you any more details um, right here. You know, every day I get pitched by people that are creating apps. I probably it really, I get about maybe 50 pitches a day from companies saying, oh, I've got the latest and greatest app. It does this and it does that. And, and I'm about to the point where I want to reply back to the PR people and says, you know, is this thing going to help me in the bathroom too? You know, is what else has it got to some miracle cure that's going to stop my back pain? And, you know, it's just, it gets a little old. And I would just want an app that says, boom, 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 boom. This is what I do. Don't hype me. Don't tell me you've been downloaded a million times. Tell me how it's going to help me. And, you know, people boast and boast and boast about downloads. But I don't care about downloads. I want to know how it's going to help me and what's going to be, what's going to be cool about it. And, um, and I just... I. Tell me who's using it. You know, tell me the appeal. Is this appeal to my to my seven year old? Does this apply to me? You know, so that's the question that's being you know I ask, and you, they PR people don't do that. So you know, I try not to do app coverage at Geek News Central just because you know you you do one, and everyone else is going to want you to cover their apps, and it drives me crazy. So what I want to do is we haven't talked about apps a while on the show. We for a while there I had you guys submitting me your favorite apps. It's been a while since we did that. So why don't you the audience feel free to drop me an email. Of course you can call the voicemail hotline at 619-342-7365. 619-342-7365. You can email me any time of course at geeknews at gmail.com. And tell me what right now is your favorite app and tell me what purpose it's it's fulfilling and kind of what age group and if it's a it's a male or female, you know, demographic. If it's something your kids love, you know, let me know. Um, the one that uh, my kids are going crazy over right now, it's a two ninety nine app on the uh, iPhone app store. It's the Rubik's Cube app. Now, my son has been he's into Rubik's Cube right now. So, you know, he's got his head into this thing going nuts. And <laughs> uh, not me. I don't play that game. I was never a Rubik's Cube. But so they found the one on the on the uh, iPad, and, you know, they're going nuts with this thing. So 
that's the one they like right now um, from from the iPad side. But uh, let me know what your what your favorite apps are, whether it be a game, a, a utility, something that's helping you out. Um, I'll be honest, right now, my favorite, uh, two of my favorite apps, believe it or not, is the Kindle app and the Audible app. I'm spending a lot of time in the Audible app listening to audiobooks. And we, you know, you guys know that Audible is a sponsor here. And if you guys get a free trial, I didn't really want to turn this into a, a commercial, but those are kind of my two favorites right now. And I've been doing a lot more reading than I, I've just been a long time since I've read really at home. So I've been doing consuming auto. I've been doing regular read, reg, reading a book too. So it's been kind of cool. It really has. But um, what, what's your favorite? What's the stuff that you're using right now? So, and again, if I, well, I guess I might as well tell you, if you want a free book on me, go to audiblepodcast.com forward slash CES, audiblepodcast.com forward slash CES. Hey, Ace Adulter says Firefox 4, it's done. They are going to release it on March 22nd, so we're six days away, or actually five days away from the release. And the thing I'm worried about is uh, Flash still doesn't work in the 64-bit version. Uh, maybe I'm having trouble. Maybe I need to reload it. Anybody else using a 64-bit version of Firefox and having trouble with, uh, with Flash? If you are, drop me an email. I'd like to know if it's just me or if this is still a, a problem. You know, people today have gotten to the point where they are, they think the world owes them something. And they, many people, and I, and I don't want to, shouldn't generalize here, but I read a story on Tech Dirt where a mom has sued a preschool claiming they didn't prepare her four-year-old for the Ivy League. She sued the York Avenue Preschool, claiming her very smart four-year-old was not properly prepared for the private schools of New York, and this could harm her chances of getting into an Ivy League college down the road. Since when do we start preparing our four-year-olds for an Ivy League college? Oh, my goodness. Please help this child. This kid is never going to have a childhood. And a parent is obsessed with getting their kid into an Ivy school at four years old. Some mother has not done their job well with this young mom. This just blows me away. And also, what happened to the parent's responsibility of preparing their child for an Ivy level college. You know, some kids, I'm gonna tell you, they may be the smartest kids in the world, and guess what? They still aren't gonna to wanna to go to college. Some kids may not be the smartest ones in the book, and they're the ones that are gonna go out and do great in college. Preparing at four years old, give me a break. More madness going on in New York. Not only are we got a mom suing because her child isn't prepared to go to an Ivy League school, the New York Times has simply lost their minds. Over the past 14 months, the New York Times spent 40, yes, 40 million dollars to build the world's stupidest paywall. For 40 million dollars, folks. Have they lost minds? I, I just, I just cannot, I just cannot fathom this. Forty million dollars. Now, here's what it is. You get, you and I, us, us folks out here that don't live in New York, that don't buy the or don't get subscription to the New York Times, we get to visit the New York Times websites twenty times a month for free. 20, million, 20, 40 million times to put a counter in the system to prevent us from getting more than 20 page views a month. Is that on a rotating 30? Or is that on a, you know, does it reset on, on, the, on the new month? They don't explain that. But here's even more insanity. Well, now they have to pay that $40 million development bill, right? So if you want the New York Times plus, in other words, if you want 
access to NewYorkTimes.com plus a smartphone app. It's $15 every four weeks. Do you know how much I pay for my newspaper here in Hawaii? I pay like five bucks a month, and I get all the access on the web. Now, if you want the New York Times and a tablet app, in other words, you want to watch, you want to read the New York Times on your tablet, that's $20, 20 bucks every four weeks. But if, oh, here's the whopper, folks. If you want full access, yes, full access to NewYorkTimes.com. Oh, you weren't getting full access before at the $20 plan. If you want full access where you can have access to the site on a tablet and the smartphone, it's only $35 a month. I'm hearing crickets. I'm hearing gasp. I'm hearing people falling out and falling on the floor. Have they lost their minds? Have they simply lost their minds? $35? If they'd have said five bucks, maybe they could have had me at five bucks. But when I saw $15 just to have access with my smartphone, ooh, and then $20 to have access with my iPad and not my smartphone, maybe it's me. But <laughs> they're done. Stick a fork in them. I guarantee you. Give me, okay, do we want to start a pool? I'll, I'll put some money on the table. Okay, what I'm going to do, is I have a nice, crispy $20 bill right here, okay? And uh, it's, uh, it's got uh, Andrew Jackson on the front, nice, crisp 20, okay? So I'm going to put a 20 that says that this is going to last 12 weeks. This, is gonna, this, this whole PayPal thing will last 12 weeks, and then they will scrap it. If they don't scrap it in 12 weeks... <laughs> Um, you guys can tell me what I can do with the 20, and I'm not going to eat it, okay? <laughs> we have a very creative idea, all right? Uh, maybe we'll just give it to charity. But you know what? There is no way. Who in their right mind, first of all, I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this nicely. Who's going to be stupid enough <laughs> to pay to pay 20 bucks or 15 or $35 for every four weeks for the New York Times? It ain't happening. It's not that good. <laughs> now, for those of you that live in Canada, oh, it's it's already in effect. And there's this beautiful article over on techdirt.com by this Canadian that says, hey, this is the dumbest business model imaginable. And he just goes off. I just don't, I just don't get it. $40 million. That's just an amazing number. And it tells you that paper deserves to go out of business with that sheer amount of stupidity. 40 million bucks. I guess they got to pay their, you know, pay, pay somebody somehow. I, I wish I was on the one that was doing the development work. My gosh. All right. I'll, I'll move on. <laughs> I digress. Hey, over at blogs.hbr.com, this is on the ha Harvard Business Review. Um, there's an interesting write-up about an experience a gal had when she was out at South by Southwest. And this is basically entitled, The Business Card is Dead. Long live the business card. And uh, for many of us, we can remember the first, first time we got business cards. I remember mine. I actually had to go to a special print shop because it really, it was before the days of the, you know, being able to go online and order uh, business cards. But I got my first deck. Oh, I was so proud of them. They were glossy and beautiful. And, and uh, you know, I just I could touch them. The real, you know, nice ink, very expensive. I was very, very proud of my first set of business cards. Now, <laughs> I order business cards and, you know, half of them go in the trash because they haven't, or in the recycle bin, because they haven't gotten used before we do an update or a change. And when I order them, I order them 2,000 at a time. And we go to shows and I, you know, they, they go out of my hand like confetti. 
But this gal said at South by Southwest, she was giving people, trying to give people their business card, and they were looking at her like, or she was asking people for their business card, and they thought they were like, ugh. And um, I'm thinking, okay, when I go to shows and when I'm meeting with companies, I want that business card. I come home, I scan it in, it goes in my system. That way I have a good follow-up. It goes into my, uh, into my CRM system so that I, you know, basically I have information on the contacts. I have all these notes. You know, it's just the way I, you know, and I load that up and I find, oh, yeah, that's right. His name is, he's Tom. And he's six feet tall. He's got a couple of kids. You know, I got all these notes in here, right? I'm out meeting with the person because when I call him back, you got to be able to say, hey, Tom, it was great to meet you at the show. Uh, how, how are your two daughters doing? You know, you got to be able to get personalized and the people know that you remember them, right? And I'm horrible at names, so I have to really work at it very, very hard. And um, so, how? okay, those of you that are a little younger than me, how are you guys doing? And are you just sharing your Twitter name or your Facebook page or are you handing out business cards or what are you doing? How are you sharing contact information? Um, I've got my Twitter and I got my Twitter account on the uh, on my business card, of course. But folks just don't want to use them no more. And I've seen some of these little itty tiny bitty ones, and those are always the ones that get lost. And um, so. I, I'm a big fan, of course, of electronic communications, but there isn't always a way to capture someone's info instantly. Um, if, if there was a way where everyone had the same type of a, if I, if we could do a handshake with our smartphone or do some sort of, you know, there's all kinds of apps, but both of you have to be running the same thing. Um, you know, what's what? What are you guys using out there? How are you, you know, as a business person, how are you gaining? The information on people that you need to reach out to them um, because many times people the only way you'll ever get their email address the one that they pay attention to is to have that you know that hardcore contact info uh, a lot of people don't like putting their email address out online because people are spamming them and so forth so what are you guys using how are you doing that context those of you that are don't have business cards let uh, let me know I'd like to hear your feedback. Geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline 619-342-7365. Okay, um, I've got an offer by the folks over at Livestream. Uh, there's a company that they have teamed up with that is they're making some hardware that I want. And basically, what it, this is pretty evolutionary. It's going to allow me to basically take a one of my cameras attach this device to it, and basically go out and be able to stream live without a backpack. And this is pretty cool stuff. It really is. You can figure this stuff right in the card. It's really simple to use. It, this is good stuff. This is uh, the, It's a game changer. And um, I want one of these pads. But currently, the, 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 um, the device only is configured to work with live stream. They're not hooked up with Ustream and anyone else so my they basically have said hey you, you pick one of these up the folks over at live stream want to make you a deal and uh, come on over and and uh and stream your show over there so i've been thinking about this and uh their offer's pretty cool considering uh, what they have said that they're going to do so how many of you had experience what's your guys's experience been with live stream and uh for those of you that watch at night, does it matter? You guys just, if you if I have the web stream up at live stream, does it really matter where you guys use the Ustream interface? Uh, for me, I guess uh, based upon, you know, the specific card, I think it might be the way to go. Love to hear you guys' feedback on that. But um, anyway, I'll, I'll let you know. Maybe the next show will actually be up on live stream. I don't know. I got to figure the configuration out for the TriCaster and make sure we can use it over there. But... Um, I don't know what your guys' experience with live stream and uh, drop me some feedback if you would, okay? And uh, I'll be talking more about this uh, specific card here in the next few days. All right, over at PC World, the RSA has warned Secure ID customers that the company was hacked. And this is a, this is big. E EMC's RCA Security Division says the security of the company's two-factor security ID tokens could be at risk 
following a sophisticated cyber attack on the company. Now, here is a company that uh, is making sure that um, you know, this, is, this is bad. These secure ID products are used on PCs, USB devices, iPhones, key fobs, about 25,000 uh, corporations. Some of them have these little key fobs. They have a little counter on it. And basically, when you're logging into the website, you look at the counter, and that use that in your password portion to authenticate you. There's all kinds of stuff here that they are tied into. And for them to have been hacked, this is bad. Now, their stock price went down in... Uh, after hours trading today, and they may be um, in for some trouble tomorrow. The ha they have not been able to clarify exactly what the hackers were able to learn. So if you are uh, working, uh, if you have a device or um, you know that you're using Secure ID with, uh, with EMC RSA Security Division, you need to let your IT department know that they've got a problem. I'm sure their the word's going to be out on the street big tomorrow. But uh, this is big, and here again, another security firm is um, gotten hacked. Now, the H.B. Gary, the federal government is basically looking at contracts with H.B. Gary, and hopefully they're going to start losing some contracts here over the next couple of days. But uh, uh, not stuff on the security side. These companies can't keep their own networks locked down. They're supposed to be secure like a rock. Now, Many of us have cars that have computers in them now. We have uh, Bluetooth systems. We've got uh, the ability to do uh, hands-free. All this, you know, this cool technology in our vehicles. Of course, you got Ford and Ford Sync. But apparently, Herrick, and, and I'm not saying which car brand because they haven't announced that yet, but hackers now can use a music file to hijack your car's computer. This is over on ExtremeTech.com. Essentially, what they've been able to do is they've been able to embed in a music file uh, some firmware that, or some code that modifies a 2,000 model car, and uh, basically what the vehicle virus does is um, it gives the uh, hackers the ability to control the um, nearby cell phones, the ability to control functions of the car via Bluetooth, opening doors, turning the car on and off, um, and it's was they they did it with a <laughs> a rap song about jacking cars and this really this virus really does jack your car but uh, the research team that presented the musical hack among its among others in its recent paper to the national academy now this is a a research product project was done uh, was submitted to a national academy electronic vehicle control and unintended acceleration research so this is scary stuff so next thing you know we're going to have hackers uh, jack on our cars via via uh, firmware updates and viruses that they upload to the vehicles uh, through music files. Crazy stuff. Talk about root kit. Remember, let's see if Sony root kits a car. <laughs> but um, what will be the first accident which will be caused by someone hacking? That's that's the next question. Here we're on Bloomberg Business Week. Matt Cutts, of course, he works for uh, Google, and Matt, Matt Cutts is kind of uh, being in. Is he's gained a new title. He's kind of like the Greenspan of Google. And, of course, we know the Greenspan is with the, what his position was. He's with the Fed. <laughs> but they're saying that Matt Cutts brings news and information to the search engine space that uh, makes uh, web publishers quake in their shoes. Um, back in you know, the end of February when they announced the changes to the Google search algorithm where they were uh, basically going to be punishing sites that were nothing but content farms, um, you know, people scrambled all over the place, and it, uh, they figured that change alone and the announcement that he made probably shifted about a billion dollars worth of advertising and business on the web to other companies. Now, I've been fortunate that Geek News Central got a huge bump in traffic uh, as a result of that February 25th article, but it's largely because of the content on this website is uh, 90, probably 99% of it is, uh, has been written is original content. We don't, you know, cut in or cut and paste anything from sites uh, unless we give, you know, clear attribution to it. So I think, uh, you know, we, we've had a good, uh, good bump in traffic because of this. But it is an interesting article about the uh, impact that this gentleman has working at Google and the announcements he makes on, uh, in behalf of Google on their website. So let's move on, on to some more techie stuff here. 
over on the BBC. Uh, you know, of course, Japan is still suffering hugely from the uh, earthquake, tsunami, of course, ongoing nuclear reactor issue. And they've also got a huge number of underground cables, um, under seat cables that are damaged. And aftershocks are preventing Japan's tele telecommunication companies from repairing undersea cables. But I was completely blown away by some of the stats that they're reporting. They're saying that um, they have as many as 150,000 internet circuits down, uh, 25,000 uh, different cable breaks, 25,000 cable breaks. That is just that's that's remarkable, um, you know. Of course, you, you figure the the coastline of Japan shifted by eight feet, the cables in the ground, and it's not going to stretch; it's going to snap. And uh, of course, in the sea as well. So they have got a huge amount of work to do to get all the infrastructure back online. Now they've been able to reroute around most of it, but uh, they say it's going to take many, many months and many millions of dollars to fix it. So it's just another thing. In a modern society today, here we have, uh, you know, cable and fiber and everything that we all rely upon to move these bits around. And, uh, you know, the shifting of the earth is not good for those cables and bits. <laughs> so um, both KDDI and NTT, which are both uh, telecommunication companies in Japan, were, were hit pretty bad. And uh, they're going to be working a long time to get it fixed. All right, the TSA, boy, oh boy, you know these clowns. This is this is a, this is amazing. We talked about last week about how the uh, airport body scanner radiation tests were t sometimes uh, ten or a hundred times stronger than what they were expecting. Well, it turns out that the test on the 250 back scanner X-ray machines produced by RapiScan of Los Angeles uh, was being tested by technicians using a form where the technicians were required to test radiation levels 10 times in a row and then divide by 10 to produce an average radiation measurement. And what was going on here was they hired guys with lower math skills, and they knew how to read the meter, but they didn't know how to divide by 10. So they were taking 10 readings, uh, say it's 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and you, know, you, divide, you take that, add it together, and divide it by 10, and what you end up with, 2, right? <laughs> well, instead, they were writing down 20. And um, so apparently this, this uh, issue was all about math and a form and people not knowing how to divide. At least that's the story. I find it very hard to believe that any technician that is smart enough to do a radiation measurement on a TSA scanner that's going around and doing 250 or 300 of these things, I find it very hard to believe that they would be so stupid as not to be able to do the math right. They say, oh, we're going to correct the form. We're going to make it easier for our field service engineers. Now, they're calling them engineers. And, you know, don't, go, don't get me wrong. You know, being a tech for 25 years, working in the electronics industry, there's a difference between an engineer and a technician. And the guy that's going out and measuring radiation levels on a back one of these scan one of these uh, backscatter uh, imaging machines is a technician, not an engineer. But I guarantee you, the technician has got not an engineering level education, but he's got a you know very sufficient technician level. And the, you just can't imagine that this was really the truth. But that's what they're saying, and that's the story that they're sticking to. So, so we'll see on this one. We will. Uh, Netflix has decided they're going to compete with the cable TV by coming up with original series. They're going to be signing some deals, doing $100 million worth of original content. So we've got that to look forward to for those of us that are Netflix customers. Of course, IE9 has come out. Uh, over 3 million people have downloaded IE9. They had about 2.5 million within the first 24 hours. As Google promised, they have come out with a plug-in that allows you to play WebM files on IE9. So this is a beta that's available, and uh, this is good news. So if you have want to make sure that you have full HTML5 support for both .mp4, m4v, and WebM, you'll be able to install this plugin. 
uh, by Google here shortly for Internet Explorer 9. So that's cool news. Of course, then those of you that are watching the show, if you're on a browser that supports WebM, uh, if you're watching the show online, you're going to be watching the WebM version, uh, which we still are not as high as quality as M4V, but uh, we're getting there working on dialing that, uh, that codec in with uh, Sorensen Squeeze. The president today has announced an, uh, admin, uh, endorsing a new privacy regulations on do not track. Um, basically, the administration raises, has been raising alarm about the state of online privacy. And the article over ours goes into the full details of the administration's uh, uh, policy recommendation. And basically, they don't want Americans tracked online. Now, they're willing to continue with the... Uh, uh, you know, all the stuff that allows the government to spy on us anyway, but uh, with the Patriot Act. But uh, the administration is uh, moving forward and supporting a do not track mechanism. And they, he has urged Congress, uh, the president has urged Congress to mandate its adoption if the industry does not embrace the idea voluntarily. So we'll see what happens here if they do that. Now, they've uh, the FTC has come down on uh, Chiquita is a uh, basically spying too much on those of us that are surfing the net and really Chiquita was the one of the sites and matter of fact they they really um were hard sells they would call me two or three times a week trying to get me to do in um in content advertising basically you hover over the top of a keyword that's that looks like it's a hyperlink and you get a pop-up ad everyone's seen those um they've been slammed and they got defined by the ftc for um, basically digging in our into our private information too much. So what do you think about the president's uh, support of a do not track type of legislation? Love to hear your feedback here at geeknews at gmail.com. Uh, one last article I got from ours today talking about a Bluetooth stereo headphone uh, using on a Mac, specifically from, is it Sennheiser? Who is this actual? Dun, dun, dun. This is the company. Yeah, it's a Sennheiser MM450. You know, I've been using uh, Bluetooth headsets for a long time. Matter of fact, I, I have a set that I wore out. So Bluetooth headsets are not so new, but this is a pretty good write-up about the MM450 and the experience he had with syncing it and the quality and so forth. So I'll have the link up in the show notes for you to, uh, to check that out. Hey, don't know if you guys uh, knew this or not, but there was a Soyuz that came back, brought some astronauts back from the National Space Station. They landed, of course, in Kamchatka uh, safely. And, uh, boy, if you want to see a picture that makes you go burr, uh, you can see those Hein rescue helicopters sitting on the ground there. Lots of snow blowing. Looks, boy, it really looks like a... <laughs> not, did I say Kamchatka? Kazakhstan, excuse me on the Kazakhstan, uh, in, in Kazakhstan, where they picked these guys up after the landing. So um, they're planning on sending a new crew up on March 29th, but the launch may be delayed until April 12th. We got some uh, communication problems in the new uh, uh, the new spacecraft that's uh, due to take the Expedition 29 team up. But uh, anyway, this is uh, information coming out of Russia and uh, another successful return flight by... Uh, Soyuz spacecraft. A little more space news here. Uh, of course, this is a week that they're honoring women. NASA has launched a website to honor women in space. Uh, I don't know if I've got the link here or not. Dun, dun, dun. Do they show me this? Uh, how come they don't have a link on this article? Anyway, at space.com, they've got the full write-up of this uh, announcement today and proclamation done by NASA. So uh, good to see that they're – oh, actually, it's women. <laughs> Women.nasa.gov right there. Boy, it, it, if you look at the picture on the uh, website, it's women.nasa.gov. So uh, definitely uh, get over there and check that out, ladies. This is a great place to send your daughters to to get them, uh, uh, to get them motivated about uh, science and space. And uh, they're also doing some pretty cool stuff uh, – um, by at NASA itself. So if you're down at the Cape, you're going to get some special tours this week. Um, also, they're doing stuff at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum this week as well. So they're, uh, they actually have some women astronauts there giving tours. So if you're within striking distance of this, uh, please get over to the uh, Space and Air this, this week 
and uh, you might uh, be able to get your daughters uh, uh, basically aligned with some of these uh, these famous uh, astronauts that are given tours at the Smithsonian. So let me go ahead here and kind of switch gears, and we're going to talk about lasers for a second, lasers in space. Earth-based lasers could, they're thinking, nudge space junk, space junk away from satellites, and they think they actually may be able to come up with uh, a method to actually get space junk to deorbit itself using a laser. Now, for me, you think like you're going to hit something with a laser, you're going to drive it out further. But they think with a pulsing, some type of a pulsing mechanism, they're able actually to have some sort of a reflection type of uh, action that will actually change the uh, trajectory of space junk. And they feel that they should be able to move some space junk around with lasers. And they're going to be hopefully doing some experiments. And the problem with it is uh, foreign nations get a little bit weird when you start shooting lasers into space because it could be considered a weapon. So they're trying to come up with some solutions that aren't as high power, high power that will not uh, physically destroy a satellite, even if they were able to illuminate one. So we'll see where, where they get on this particular uh, initiative. Google today has announced a, a – basically they put a page up. It's, it's a resource for those affected by the earthquake and tsunami in Japan. And uh, they've got linked up here a crisis response page. They've got uh, a person finder page. They've got some stuff with some satellite images, mapping, uh, translation. Uh, it goes on and on. And where to give donations as well. So um, this is a pretty cool resource that Google has put up. And uh, please share it with friends and people that you know. Especially if you've got people who are affected in Japan, they may find something here that will help them find loved ones and, and so forth. So nice of Google to, uh, to put this online for folks. Over on searchenginewatch.com, and this is one of the sites that one of our listeners had recommended that I read on a regular basis. There's an article entitled, Your Company Sucks, the Online Reputation Management Wars. Now, many of you remember that Bank of America for a while was fighting a website that was bankofamericasucks.com, and they went to court and finally won the, uh, were able to get that domain back in their possession. But one of the things I really kind of laugh about, if, if you are to the point, and your company's growing to the point where someone is going to uh, build a website that is going to be specifically targeting and calling out your faults, um, maybe you deserve to have that type of a response but they're saying buy all your domains buy everyone that says sucks or you know anything that would that would make you not look good and um but here's the thing that costs a lot of money to do that and uh but they say that motivated competitors and so forth could be doing that extortion to see seo um, they could uh, be impacting your traffic, um, an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend. I don't think you can cover every case. I think if you're going to play online, you got to be willing to, you know, kind of come up and you deal with the trolls that come along as well. So have any of you had that effect? Your company's been targeted uh, on online forums or someone setting up a domain name that, uh, you know, is like yourdomainsucks.com instead of yourdomain.com. Um, or your company.com. Have you had that issue? And uh, what have you done about it? But anyway, they've got some checklist items here for you to, to do if you're worried about that uh, impact. I think this is most of us have been online long enough that we probably know that we need to buy all the iterations of our dot com, dot, you know, dot org, dot net, dot biz, all that. All right, let's talk about Time Warner here. I think we talked about them a little bit on the last show that they're going to be introducing a. Um, 32 channels to a uh, basically an iPad app. And it, oops, let me bring. Uh, I guess I had it up. Here's the thing about this, and this is what we have found out. Obviously, um, they launched this. They had a huge response. If you had your iPad in your house with this app loaded, you were able to watch uh, up to 32 different channels long as you were connected to the Time Warner high-speed cable system and you, um, you were able to – and it was so popular that it blew their system out. And within 24 hours, it uh, it killed them. They just – they didn't think they were going to have that big of an uptake. 
So for me, um, I didn't get to try it because they didn't allow it to launch in Honolulu in Hawaii. So those of you in the lower 48, I think in Alaska too, if you have Time Warner, are going to be able to use this um, this app to watch a variety of channels as long as you have a basic cable subscription. But there's a lot of folks out there saying that uh, Time Warner cannot do this. They're saying this is illegal. And uh, But for me, you know, I'm thinking to myself, okay, we've cut the cable here, right? It'd be kind of cool to... Um, be able to watch some of these channels if I could pay just the subscription to do that. Uh, BBC, Bravo, Discovery Channel. You know, those are some of the channels that I really can't get with the cable cut. But I could get through the app, and it would cost me a lot less money if they would do it, but they don't. They make you have a basic cable package to get it. So... Uh, We'll see. We'll see where, where this takes us. But the uh, the ice has been broke here, and uh, cable companies understand they're under fire. Well, only time will tell on this. Big court case going on where Google is really being uh, called out here. Uh, IsoHunt has continued with its legal battle against Hollywood. The site uh, filed its reply brief to the U.S. Court of Appeals in which it hints that Google, not IsoHunt, is the biggest BitTorrent search engine. And they basically said, hey, you can go into custom searches and search for a file and you and, and actually customize to look for .torrent as a specific uh, return. So in other words, you go into the, if you've, if you've never done this, you just go to google.com and there's the advanced search button. You get in that form and you can really specify what you're looking for and they say that there's hundreds of millions of pages linked to a variety of different terms and they, where you can find movies and you can find all kinds of copyright material that's available to be downloaded via BitTorrent. And he says, why are we being impacted and why are we being going after when Google's got the same exact information available on their website? And they got a pretty strong argument here. Now, they're going to try to get this to go to a jury trial. Um... But, no, this is a court of appeals. It can't go to a jury. This has already been it's already been litigated, I guess. So we'll see. But they say that in, a, in its quest for a jury trial, ISO Hunt suggests that they, that they, but not Google, are hunted down and scapegoated by the movie studios. To put it in stronger terms, ISO Hunt is indirectly telling the court that Google may be the largest torrent search on the Internet. But how come they sent this to the U.S. Court of Appeals? Okay, so there was a district court verdict. They are basically saying that the 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 ruling went too far. Okay, it's coming back to me now. So they're not going to be going back to a jury with this. Uh, this is in the court's hands at this point. So a little bit of incorrect information within the actual article. Um, White House is basically, you know, on the one hand, they're saying that uh, folks should not uh, be tracked. But on the other hand, the White House has come out and said that streaming, streaming content that is not yours should be a felony. And that basically it should be under the same, basically under some same rules that copyright infringement is, uh, standard copyright infringement. So the Obama administration's IP enforcement coordinator, Victoria Espinel, has released a list of proposals in a white paper of actions against counterfeit pharmaceuticals and a variety of other targeted um, websites and services that are out there. But they want to make streaming someone else's content a, a felony. And uh, so obviously there's folks out there that are restreaming uh, television content today, and they would probably be the ones most, uh, most targeted. Now, on a more positive front for peer-to-peer, for -peer, an indie band has topped a million downloads, and it's broke some uh, BitTorrent records. Uh, this is pretty cool. So they have had one point, let me, how many was it? 1.3 million downloads of their music. And uh, I'm not familiar with the band at all. I'm going to actually go out and probably look for it. It's called uh, Sick of Sarah. And uh, so they've had a million downloads. They gave out their complete album to... Anyone that wanted it for free, basically they're getting huge publicity. 
And uh, they've set some records with the number of peers on BitTorrent and so forth, and the number of single downloads for a single, uh, single album. So has anybody listened to these folks yet? The album's called 2205 Sick of Sarah is, of course, the group. And uh, you can get this free. They've released it. So if you want some new music, check it out. And if you've downloaded uTorrent in the last month that was already queued in there, you would have got it for free already. Um, and you may not even know it. So look in your downloads folder, all right? Okay, looking here on an article over on technologizer.com, they're talking about visas moving into the uh, PayPal turf, and uh, they're going to be offering a payment service. So this is going to be interesting in that you're going to be able to link a visa card um, to an account. Basically, you, you basically work with your bank, um, and this is specifically going to be offered through banks initially, but you, through your bank, you link your visa card to the account, and then you can go in and pay people for, you know, if someone bought dinner and they need some money back. So really what you're going to be, and this isn't going to be like considered a cash advance, which I find pretty amazing. I can see where this is probably going to get abused, but you can actually have your Visa card hit to be actually pay someone else for whatever reason. Now, I don't know how the transaction is going to work on the other person is going to get a check or if they're going to, it's going to credit into a savings account or something. But Visa says the payment service should be available for, for uh, from participating financial institutions beginning second half of this year. So uh, we'll see where this goes um, in competing with uh, with PayPal. Over on CNET, Microsoft has helped the Feds bring down the spam giant called Rustock, and apparently this spam uh, and it was basically uh, over a million bots. Uh, was responsible for a large majority of the spam email that was coming out on the internet every day. And uh, so Microsoft worked with the uh, the feds to basically get the controlling servers shut down. There was raids on a large number of hosting facilities to uh, basically at the same time in order to um, bring down all of the machines that were controlling the million or so machines out there that had been hacked. But they feel that 39% uh, of the world spam was coming from this group. Uh, there is some re new news out that the network may be recovering a little bit. But um, this operation known as B107 uh, basically was uh, pretty effective. We'll see it over the next couple of weeks how effective it, it really, truly was. Over on ABC at abclocal.go.com. You guys are going to love this. Any of you live in Houston, um, I'm going to just bring this up. You guys can see it. And it's it's the picture's worth a thousand words here. Um, basically, some hackers hacked some uh, construction sites. The first one was uh, a smiley with LOL. And the uh, second time they hacked it, they uh, put in the words P-O-O-P. -O -O and I'll let you do your own spell. <laughs> yeah, essentially poop. So uh, the the, the city's not real happy about that. So, hey, if you get caught, that's going to be a $500 fine. So be careful out there if you're out running around hacking uh, these construction signs. And Alt-2600 at one time, a number of years ago, had a step-by-step -step process on how you operate one of those machines. So some of that information is still floating out around the web here. He had judges given Sony access to the PayPal records of the guy that was able to hack the PlayStation 3. So if you paid any money to George Holtz and uh, used his PayPal account, be prepared. The the Apple will have your um, PayPal information, any inf any cash that you've sent over to them. And I don't know what that means, but uh, it probably means that Apple's, I mean, Sony's going to be coming after all of you that uh, hacked your PlayStation 3s. Time will tell. All right, I've got a weird sh shaped yard here. This is really going off the beaten path from tech. But my yard is such that I never can get the sprinkler just right to hit everything. Now, I've been thinking about putting in a sprinkler system, but it's like three grand. Digging, I do it myself, but digging dirt here in Honolulu is like um, you need a jackhammer because the ground is that hard. It's not like you can just shovel a hole. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way here. Not with, uh, you know, considering that we were, this, these islands were built, uh, built from volcanoes. So we got a lot of rocks and uh, hard ground. So anyway, I have to, you know, move a sprinkler around the yard. And tonight, I have found the ultimate sprinkler. It's from Gilmore. I know many of you are not 
thinking about watering your yards yet? But this thing is really cool. <laughs> and uh, it's available for 1920. It's available, um, excuse me, wow, $44.95 from Amazon or 19, if you want the aluminum one, or $19.29, one made of plastic. I think I'll buy the plastic one first. And uh, but you can adjust it. It sprays a certain areas. You can set up quadrants. It's uh, yes, I cannot wait to get my hands on this thing. And I can't believe it's not being sold in uh, in home and home and garden stores. But um, the way they've designed this is you can you know you can put it right up against a wall and get it adjusted just right. Um, yeah. Okay. Why am I getting excited about a sprinkler? I'm just a geek. I like cool stuff like this. Okay. <laughs> um. Lexar has uh, introduced, whoops, let me bring this up for you here so you can see it. Lexar has introduced 128 gig uh, SD cards, class 10, which is uh, pretty impressive. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, and the price on these, uh, the 64 gig version is uh, 199 The um, 128 gig is 329 But I really want you to put this into perspective. Um, I have a box actually over here on the floor that has six 32 gig class 10 SD cards in it. Yeah, class 10, class 10 SD cards in it. There were 32 gigs. There were a hundred bucks a piece. So if I can get a, a, a 64 gig card for, well, the price really hasn't come down. 199, the 128 is 329. So they do give you a break on a per gig cost on the 128 gig card at 329. But if I stuck that in my JVC HD camera, I could essentially do about two days worth of CES interviews without changing the card out. So pretty cool stuff. So anyway, this is uh, the, the class 10 cards only uh, Support up to 20 megs per second, and uh, I'm gonna have to look at the class. Make sure that my class of cards are higher than are not higher than a 10. But uh, this is big, going to 128 gig cards. We knew this was coming. This is a SDXC card, so uh, may not work in all of your devices out there. So just a little word of of caution. All right, we of course with the uh, power outage in Japan, we're always looking for stuff that and thinking about uh, ways where we're, where we can be more self sufficient. The Cookup 200 is a new grill, and I saw this on ogizmo.com, and I, I don't know if this is, you know, this is kind of a, if you got enough money and you can you can afford this thing, it's uh, it's 700 bucks, and what it does is it uses the sun to basically grill your food. And you put it together in about 15 minutes, it completely tears down and goes into a bag, and they, I don't know if you can see it or not, but they've got a little bit of a, a plate there where you can cook stuff. So you're not going to be like drizzling grease onto this thing. But um, you focus it so the sun's beam is uh, directly onto the cooker and you can cook with it. So I guess if you're, you're out of gas and you have sun, you can, at least you can cook some food. Um, pretty expensive, but uh, pretty effective. I've seen it cooking stuff. Now, they didn't... Uh, tell you how hot it really got but uh be one of those things where we'll have to see about some reviews coming out about this on how well it really works i'm sure it works good if it's nice and sunny otherwise i don't know hey iptv is catching up uh or starting to catch on excuse me now 10 percent of those of you that are um in in europe in france are subscribers to iptv the number is growing quickly in the united states as well they feel that the IPTV market is growing to the point where 45 million subscribers are now connected to, in some form or another to IPTV. The growth since 2006 has been, you know, almost linear. It's been just a huge growth rate. Um, so exciting to see this happening. Uh, China has a pretty big group of IPTV users as well. Uh, the U.S. is sitting, I think, at about 16 percent. Korea at 8 percent. Japan 4 percent. But uh, IPT offerings continue to climb, and people are continuing to uh, um, describe those type of services more. All right, IE9 is partnered with Hulu Plus for a free month, so I didn't know this was available. But if you enable the, um, uh, if you use a new taskbar where you would pin the Hulu.com as an app, let me read here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. 
It's pinning feature to pin Hulu.com to your Windows taskbar. They're going to give you a free 30-day access to Hulu.com. So if you have not tried Hulu.com and you've downloaded IE9, you now can get a free 30-day trial. This link in the show notes will actually uh, give you the information that you need in order to set this up. And uh, it just adds a little taskbar to it. You can see Hulu, Hulu TV movies, Hulu, Hulu Plus. You can browse through it. A look at recently added spotlight recommendations. So that's uh, an eight dollar value. You get it one month for free. If you haven't used Hulu Plus yet, a uh, great way to check uh, check that out. All right. Um, over at makingwindowseasy.com, the same place I found the IE9 article. There's a great website that shows all kinds of cool games that are uh, basically been abandoned. Where you can find browse games through category. It's called uh, freeoldies.com, so you may find some of those games you used in the past. You can, I'll leave that in the show notes for you to check out. For those of you that are Linux users, have you checked out GNOME 3.0? Well, the GNOME 3 beta is uh, pretty impressive, and uh, being that I don't run Linux stuff around here much, I was uh, pretty excited to... Why isn't that loading? Isn't that weird? I've had this happen on this website specifically a lot lately. You guys go to makeuseof.com. They've got a great article up, and then I tried loading it, and in the uh, in the in the secondary browser, and uh, it didn't load. So I'm hoping this article didn't go away. But lots of screenshots on the GNOME 3.0 beta and what it's going to look like on your desktop. Pretty clean, pretty smooth. So. Um, I have this in the show notes. I'll double check it, of course, but I will put it up there. But I wonder why it didn't. This is happening a lot on this website. Is it going to come up and say 404 again? Very weird why this is not there. Well, it just goes to show you that uh, maybe we won't use this website as a reference site anymore. All right, over at lifehacker.com, they've got a way for you to set up an o your own video alarm clock. And uh, basically, a little hacking needs to be done with your uh, one of your Apple devices. And it will essentially play at the designated time to wake you up and uh, play you a video or something on your television. I leave my television off, so I don't know uh, if this requires, you know, I don't leave it on all night. So I don't know if this requires you to set up some sort of uh, uh, IR system to, in order to get it to turn on. But the full instructions are in the... Uh, um, on the web article itself, and this is a, a kind of cool gadget project for someone to do over the weekend. Media Converter for OS X is a pretty cool uh, drag-and-drop video converter. Um, it's, you know, many of us have used Handbrake on our, on our Mac operating systems, but if you just want a simple way to rip a iPod or an MP3 or a WebM file, uh, you'll definitely want to check out this Media, media Converter um, application. And it's at media-converter.sourceforge.net. I have a link up in the show notes for you to check out. But uh, pretty simple media converter. It doesn't give you a lot of options, uh, but uh, it definitely is dummy proof. Hey, Google Docs has been updated again. Of course, they've been making all they just making a lot of headway here recently, but this is a good write-up that was done by Alan, one of our writers from the UK. And uh, he did a good write-up on what's going on with Google Docs and some of the changes and how to, to manage that. So definitely check that out. I have the link up in the show notes for you as well on uh, reviewing that. Let me look at my time here. I'm long. I need to, I've got a bunch of articles I need to uh, read yet, but we're going to stop at this point and get into the uh, email for the evening. So there's going to be some bonus articles that I actually didn't cover in the show, and I hope that you'll take the time to, uh, to go through those. Um, I want to go back. I had an email from the last show that I was not able to read. And um, let's see if I can find this here. Okay. This is from Brandon. He says, I'm not sure I stumbled upon your podcast. I'm from Minnesota and stumbled upon it with my phone. But anyways, I managed to catch a bit of your rant with your provider wireless, I believe it was. This topic came out shortly after your questions to those who are about to buy the iPad 2. So says, while I'm writing this, I heard you can't wait for 4G to reach Hawaii. LTE, to be exact, technically LTE isn't 4G. LTE Advance is. Cell phone service providers are literally false advertising that they have 4G. Supposedly, the LTE and WiMAX is only 3.5G, 
4G has yet to really hit America. He says, I'm holding out. No sense in buying something new unless it has the WiMAX Advance LTE Advance compatible. So he's giving me a link here to InfoWorld talking about 4G and some of the stuff, some of the misconceptions about that. And I have that link up in the uh, in the show notes on it. Hey, I want to thank Rick for becoming an insider. We definitely appreciate your uh, support of the show, Rick. And uh, thanks for becoming a new insider here at uh, Geekness Central. I have an email here from Yuki. And um, this is kind of an interesting one. This is um, by a company called Lunascape.tv. And uh, she's basically spreading the word. She says, hey, we are web browser, web browser startup out of Japan and want to do something to help our country, however limited it may be. So I have a link up in the show notes. And they're going to be donating uh, up to a million yen, uh, which is a pretty big donation. But Lunascape is going to addi uh, donate an additional 50, 50 yen for each free download of Lunascape, it's a free browser for iPhone, iPod, iTouch, iPad for up to five. So a grand total of up to five million yen. So let me do the actual uh, conversion here on, uh, I think the yen traded today at um, 79, which is like remarkably low. So that's actually, they're going to donate up to, if I did that right, five million they're going to donate up to sixty-three thousand uh, dollars to uh, to the uh, relief efforts in Japan, and uh, I'll have a link up here to Lunascape.tv. So if you just go down and download it, and add the browser to, I guess it's a it's probably an add-in um, in the App Store, and I didn't check, but uh, you can find all the details at Lunascape.tv, and uh, just by you know downloading and installing it, they're going to they're going to make a, a donation to. Uh, to the relief fund. Got an email from Andrew who says, hey, Lexar released the first 128. Oh, actually, we just covered that too. Um, so I have that link from Andrew. He says, also, Adobe builds Flash to HTML5 converter. I saw that. Pretty cool. And uh, yes, Andrew, everything's good. Uh, thanks for the um, uh, thanks for the comments that you kept private as well. I got an email here from Rick, and uh, he said, uh, hey, Todd, this is what sold me on WordPress android.wordpress.org and I think that's it that's all I had for actual emails that come in and uh, I did not oh I, yes I had one voicemail it's pretty long let me look at the time we're going to go ahead and play it and uh, we'll take us way long tonight but it is what it is and uh, let me play the voicemail and then I'll come back with you for a second and uh, and sign off let me turn the volume up here Here we go. Hey, Todd. This is Seth from Michigan giving you a call. Hey, Seth. I'm listening to your latest podcast, and you're talking about AT&T's DSL broadband download caps at yeah. 150 gigabytes per month. Yeah. Um, one thing that I'm curious about, I assume AT&T does it like other companies do. I believe when you have 150 gigabyte transfer cap, it's actually 150 gigabytes up and down combined. So if you, say, backup your entire hard drive to Carbonite.com, for example, an online backup storage solution, then that might be 30, 40, 50 gigabytes of your content. For my instance, I am actually using AT&T DSL. I actually have two megabytes, or sorry, megabits per second download. And our bandwidth will be absolute lowest is usually about 60 a month. On average, it's usually about 80 or 90 gigabytes per month. Most we ever had was 120 gigabytes per month. And that's obviously getting pretty close to the cap, and it's all legitimate content with only about five or six users on the network, which I suppose is probably pretty close to the average, maybe a little more than the average number of users on a network. It'll actually consist of probably one or two users doing Hulu, one or two shows a week, maybe maybe three shows a week at the most on Hulu. It'll consist of online gaming, um, quite a few hours of online gaming, about two or three users of online gaming on the PC, probably about five to five or six hours probably per day of that, um, between at least two users of that. And on the weekends, a lot of gaming. 
and then a PlayStation 3, which will actually do its its updates, some game demos, things like that. And once in a while, some Linux distribution downloads, but no illegal content whatsoever. It's all legitimate content, and yet we are still using you know, more than half. Um, like I said, the highest month was 120 gigabytes, which is really edging up close to 150 gigabyte per limit. And when I'm saying my, my transfers, this is download exclusively. Um, upload varies uh, quite a bit depending on the month, depending on what we're backing up to the Internet. So some month, months it will be as low as 15 or so. Some months it will be up to about 30. So if I actually combine my, my greatest month usage of download of 120, if I remember right, that month's upload was 36, I would be at 156, just over my overall bandwidth cap. And I'm on their lower speeds. Um, AT&T wow. typically offers three, give or take, um, tiers of DSL. They'll have, I believe they call it their basic, which is 1.5 down. They have their, what do they call it, advanced, I believe it might be, which is three down. And they have, I think they call it their ultimate or something to that degree, which is six megabytes down. Now, for people who have 1.5, 2-ish down, it's almost difficult to use a full 150 gigabytes up and down throughout a month. You have to use Internet nearly nonstop. If you have an actual 3 or a 6 down, it's going to go pretty quick. Um, on my current connection with the 2 down, watching... Video online is pretty smooth with one user, but if you use two users, it's not very smooth, and that's why we don't have Netflix, for example. If we had three or six, we'd actually have Netflix while people are playing games, and we would easily use that 150 gig. I am glad they have that, the 50 gigabytes above, for every 50 gigabytes you use, it's only $10 extra. I think that's a, it's a halfway reasonable rate considering what other vendors are making users pay but yeah it is a little bit small on their their cap so thanks for informing us and keep the good show all right bye hey thanks for the uh thanks for calling the information on how much bandwidth you're using i it's uh it's one of those situations where you, i guess we're, we're all going to find out and we'll see how how much the at&t users squeal um over the uh over the caps but um, great call, great information, great feedback. We definitely, I definitely appreciate it. And uh, thanks for being part of the Ohana here at, uh, at Geek News Central. Okay, we're, uh, as usual, we're long, but uh, it is what it is. Everyone, thanks for hanging out with me. If you've got comments on the show, geeknews at gmail.com, geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 619-342-7365. We'll see you next time around. Everyone take care. And aloha.